The Parallax HB25 is a motor controller so that a microcontroller can control motors that have higher current and voltage requirements than what the microcontroller can provide. In this video I'm going to show you how to make the necessary connections, the principle of operation, and how to connect and program it using a pickaxe microcontroller. The um, HB25 has a few connections. There are the plus and there is the minus. There are the M1 and the M2 connections. And there are the connections for the PWM. Let's take a look at the plus and the minus connections. This is for your power source, your battery typically. And you would simply take and connect the positive end of your battery to the positive terminal. You would take the negative connection of your battery and connect it to the negative terminal of the HP25. It's very important that you observe polarity when making these connections. Also, you need to make sure that the battery, in terms of voltage, is appropriate for not only the motor that you're using, but within the limits of the HB25. You'll need to take a look at the data sheet, making sure that that is the case. Also, many times there is a switch placed in between the battery and the HB25 so that you can turn the motor controller, and consequently the motor, on and off via the switch. The other connection the M1 and M2 is for your motor and that simply would be your connections for the motor. Um, polarity is not important other than making sure your motor is turning in the uh, appropriate direction. So if in your, <coughs> excuse me, if in your program you uh, are expecting it to go forward clockwise, whatever that may be, and it's going the opposite direction, you would simply reverse the leads to the motor. The final connections are the ones that are up here at the top. There's a letter W, R, and B, which represents the colors white, red, and black, as for a servo cable. Your servo cable may not have those specific colors. It may vary slightly. But the B, as I said, is for black. That would be your ground connection. There is your R, which is your red, which is your plus 5 volts. And then there is the white, which is going to be your PWM signal. So let's say for the purpose of the programming example, I'm going to make that pin B.7. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we would then program this using the pickaxe. The first thing we need to do is before we start sending PWM signals to this HP25, we need to make sure that it is on and powered up. So we need to create a loop and we'll do that using the do and the loop. Now as it if we're left just like this, that would be an infinite loop. We need to loop until a certain condition has been met. With the HB25, the uh, white labeled connection, this PWM signal connection, is actually both an input and an output. So we can loop until that particular pin. So since we're going to be using this as an input, we'll say pin B.7 goes high or is equal to a 1. So we're using this B.7 initially as an input, waiting for that input to go high, that's the 1 part of this, and that will indicate that this is now on, powered up. Once that is done, it will exit the loop and it will continue. Now since we've used it as an input, we have to uh, revert this to an output. To do that, we simply need to give it an output command such as low. So we'll say low B.7. Since we are using this as an output, it would simply be B.7 and not pin B.7. 
Also, as with any program, we want to use symbols wherever we can. In order for me to be able to conserve some space, I'm not using those symbols and defining those symbols, but we'd want to use something in place of pin B.7, something in place of the output B.7. Now that we have made the pin B.7 an output, we need to stick a little bit of a delay in there, making sure that that has enough time to switch to an output and again not very much five milliseconds and we then need to for this motor controller give it a neutral pulse so we're going to initialize that use that using the servo command so we'll say servo it needs to know what pin we're using for that again that'll be the b.7 the servo command is an output type of command and it needs to know what pulse width a neutral is a 1.5 millisecond pulse. With the servo command, we would write that as a 150. So at this point, the HB25 has been powered up. We know that it's powered up, and we've initialized it with this neutral pulse. We're now ready to give it commands to make the motor turn in whatever direction and speed that we want. And we do that using the servo position or servo POS command. So let's say that we want to go full speed in one direction. We would say, this is continuing from down below there, so we'd have servo POS. It needs to know what pin we're using, still B.7. And it needs to know then at what speed and direction. This is the same command that we used for controlling a positional servo. And we can command it to move to an extreme counterclockwise, extreme clockwise position, or any place in between by giving it the appropriate pulse width. So there is a range of acceptable values for this command. What I found with this particular HB25, with my microcontroller, with my motor, that the maximum value that I could use was 220. I found that if I went any greater than that, I had either erratic behavior of the motor or no operation at all. Yours may differ slightly with your motor, your HB25, and your microcontroller. Now, if I simply left it like this, this motor would continue to spin in full speed in one, in one direction or the other until I gave it some other servo position command. Uh, so there's really nothing necessary here to keep that motor turning. The In the background, the pickaxe microcontroller continues to generate the appropriate pulse width. Now I'm going to, for the sake of programming, because I don't want to switch my speed immediately, I'm going to put in here a pause. So we're going to let it move in that particular direction and speed for one second before I go ahead and change it. I would change it using the servo POS command, still pin B.7. But now I'm going to make it spin in full speed in the opposite direction. So I need to pick a value that is less than 150. And what I found with my microcontroller, with my um, HP25, with my motor, is the smallest value that I could have was an 80. Although technically this command could use a smaller value, again, this worked for my motor and my motor controller. And again, this would continue going now at this speed in this direction. It's now going in the opposite direction as my 220, because I am on the other side in terms of pulse width from my neutral command. But it'll continue moving at this speed and direction until I give it some other. I can pick any value between 80 and 220. As the value gets closer to 150, it's going to slow down. The what side of that 1.5 millisecond pulse will determine the direction. Now that doesn't mean that the motor will move with all values at a particular speed. For example, if I'm really close to my neutral position, a 151, that will probably not allow enough voltage current going to the motor to actually see it move. So there are some practical values that will work in here. Not every single value will generate a speed change, and that's going to be very, very close to this neutral position. So you would just continue uh, with whenever you need the motor to change direction, to change speed, you would simply issue another servo POS command with the appropriate value. If you want to make it stop, you would simply give it a 150 value. 
All right, that concludes on how to use the HP 25, how to wire it, its operation, and how to program it using the pickaxe microcontroller.